Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first night of the 2015 St. Louis Humidity Festival. <laughs> no kidding, in the beautifully air-conditioned Sheldon. How about that? Yes. We have quite the show tonight to honor a very special man who uh, actually wrote the theme to the Charlie Brennan Show, which was called Oscar Night, that ran for three and a half years on KMOX Radio. And uh, Ray Kennedy, the pride of Maplewood, Missouri. He sure made it look easy, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did. And we have just the best guys in town to honor him tonight. Without further ado, what can we say about this adopted son of St. Louis and his trio, including his father, who are here tonight? John Pizzarelli has been seen on the Conan O'Brien Show, Late Night with David Letterman, with Jay Leno, Jimmy Fallon. He's recorded more than 20 CDs and LPs. He's recorded with Sir Paul McCartney, James Taylor, Rosemary Clooney. He opened for Frank Sinatra. He had his own Broadway show. He actually performed at Richard Nixon's home in Saddle River, New Jersey. He wrote a best-selling book, Something tells me he's standing behind me. <laughs> he flew to St. Louis for this wonderful occasion to celebrate a great life, and we are, I am, so appreciative for the John Pizzarelli Trio. <laughs> Every little raindrop and sky of blue Oh, how my heart beats for you Past every little whistle stop and avenue Oh, how my heart beats for you You are my shining star No matter where you are You're every rhyme that I have in my repertoire And you are the reason why I'm never blue Oh, how my heart beats for you Sky of blue, oh how my heart beats for you. 
It will be uh, 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 frequently difficult for me to do things in a normal tone of voice this evening. This is a very special city for me, as I've said many, many times. And uh, it's because of Ray Kennedy. Uh, we, uh, we, are, we are here and that we have any sort of uh, pull in this city. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, We'll just talk about Ray throughout the evening, but uh, the music is what we're here to play for you. That song that we just opened with is an amazing, uh, flawless composition of mine. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I like to start out as humble as possible. It's not the, it's not the heat, it's the humility. I apologize in, in, in advance for anything else that I may say. Well, anyway, that was the first song that uh, on our new standards record, the first record that Ray recorded with us uh, when he joined the group. And I remember uh, uh, he had the first solo on that song, and uh, it was just this miraculous bit of business. And when we were, I went out to California to master the record with Bernie Grundman, who was it just has mastered all these great records. After you record it. You mix it and then you take it to another guy who like shines it up. It's like the final thing, like with the shoes, the last thing they do, they sort of spit on their shoe and they get it and then all say, whoa, that was it. Uh, and so this is where they really shine the record up. So I was with this guy, Bernie Grunman, and he put up, oh, how my heart beats for you. And it started playing and he went, who's that guy? <laughs> I said, oh, that's me singing. No, uh, the piano player. Who's the piano player? <laughs> so anyway, uh, it was Ray Kennedy. So we're going to play some of the songs from the, for, that the group played. That was Oh How My Heart Beats for You. Uh, and uh, please welcome on the piano Conrad Peshkutsky. <laughs> Martin Pizzarelli. When I take my sugar to tea All the boys are jealous of me For I never ever take her where the gang goes When I take my sugar to tea I'm a rowdy dowdy, that's me She's a high hat baby, that's she So I never take her where the gang goes when I take my sugar to tea Every Sunday afternoon We forget about our cares Rubbing elbows at the Ritz With those millionaires When I take my sugar to tea All the boys are jealous of me For I never ever take away Sugar to
Sunday afternoon We forget about our cares Rubbing elbows at the Ritz With those millionaires And I take my sugar to tea All the boys are jealous of me Cause I never ever take her where the gang goes When I take my sugar When I take my sugar to tea Rhythm, I got music. I got my guy looking as for anything more. I got daisies in green pastures. I got my guy looking as for anything more. Oh man, trouble, I don't mind him. You won't find him at my door. I got starlight, I got sweet dreams. Got my guy looking as for anything more. Who could ask for anything more? Build it down. You know, it, that's the thing. I mean, I don't, I don't know if any, you know, I don't know how anybody really goes about 
telling people they have MS or, or, or and we know Ray had it, and, but didn't tell anybody for years. I mean, I would imagine sometime in the mid 90s or something. And I mean, we didn't know. I didn't know till two years ago myself. And by then it had really taken on a life of its own. And uh, I mean, he couldn't play the piano, couldn't do anything really. So, I mean, that's uh, the sad side of the story that uh, a guy, we were able to harness this, this magic for 11 years to hear all this great music and to suddenly come to an end was rather tragic. Your 
love will live in my heart. So kiss me, my sweet and so. I was saying in the past that the, 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 the funny thing about Ray Kennedy being in our group was we auditioned him, uh, which was absurd. Uh, uh, he, he, and I think quietly he auditioned us in the process because he was so well-formed a musician when he came to my father's house. We had, a, we had an audition at my father's house because he had a piano. And we went there, and, and Martin had the bass, and uh, we're like, okay, what do you want to play? And we played, we'll, we'll play what we played. We're going to play Paper Moon next. So, so we played Paper Moon, and Ray was playing. We're like, well, that's pretty good. So then Ray said, well, uh, and I always talk in Ray's voice. I talk in everybody else's voice. Like when I talk about my father, get the guitar, what are you doing? That's, you know, <laughs> it's just, just something that naturally happens, so. <laughs> so. Uh, I said, Ray, what would you like to play? And Ray said, well, I'd, I'd like to play Naturally. And Naturally was just this nutty little original song that we had on our record. And I was like, sure, let's play it. So we started to play this thing. And we're going, do, 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 do. And it was one of those fast little things that we're just playing. And, and Ray starts playing the piano. And I'm just sitting there and I'm going, yeah, this is pretty good. And all of a sudden I hear, and I'm going, what the hell is that? And I realized it's Martin. He's like... I said, I, I said to myself, I said, I think we got ourselves a piano player. <laughs> so anyway. Um, and the other, I'll give you one more quick thing. It really, it's, you know, he was, Ray was as humble a person as existed for someone who played the piano the way he did. And the, the beauty of it was uh, we could sort of, we could sort of egg him on to ruin other piano players quietly. <laughs> so we were in a place in Washington, D.C. This is now. So we finish in Vienne. The next day, we fly back to Paris. We get on the plane in Paris, and we fly to Washington, D.C. for a gig that night. Yeah, exact. Dartboard Productions. Boo, boo, boo. <laughs> so we get to this hotel. No bags. The bags don't make it. We make the gig. I don't know how the hell we made the gig. Oh, we, we, there was a, the guy took our, they gave me the guitar. Oh, here's your guitar before we left Paris, but the bags didn't leave Paris. They wanted to stay. Paris was so beautiful. <laughs> so we get to, we play this gig in the rain, of course, and uh, uh, it's all wet, crazy, crazy wet. And then we go back to the hotel and we're just, we don't know what time it is and we're thinking, well, uh, Ray doesn't drink, so I drank for him. <laughs> Gladly. And, uh, and so there's this piano player, and he's actually quite good, and he's playing a little piano, and we were sort of sitting there, and uh, you know, we, were, we were the only way we always applaud at the end of a song, and people are going, oh, they're applauding for music. Who are these people? <laughs> and, the, and the piano player comes over to our table. And says, oh, what do you got? Yeah, we have a little jazz combo. I was like, oh, that's nice. Well, and, and I, you know, in my own snotty little thing, if he doesn't know who Bucky Pizzarelli is, I go in for the kill. <laughs> so I'm sitting there going, yeah, 
All right. So I say, and Ray's, and I can see Ray now. I can see the wheels turning. Because Ray's like, I've been up for three days, and I'm going to kill somebody. <laughs> so I'm going, down boy, down boy. I got gotcha. you. And I say to him, well, who are your favorite, do uh, you have any favorite piano players? And this genius says, yes, uh, uh, Bach and Fats Waller. And Ray went, huh, I'd like to play. I said, Ray, why don't you play a little piano for this guy? And he was like, would you like to play? And, and, and before, we even, before Ray even accepted the invitation, he was down at the piano. There were sparks coming out of the piano. He was playing. He was, he was like, he was, um, what's the word I want to say uh, when, you, when you, he was, uh, well, he was, he, he was just, the spirit of Art Tatum uh, through the fingers of, of Oscar Peterson inside of, of George Shearing on the way to Errol Garner and Teddy Wilson. <laughs> he was going, <laughs> and we just sat there and said, this guy doesn't even know he's getting his head handed to him. <laughs> And he had that way, he did that too, you know, he was, he was, uh, you know, I mean, uh, we'd go to, we'd go to, uh, uh, I'll, I'll play after this, I promise. Uh, <laughs> but we would go to uh, symphony dates, and they were always wary, the, the symphonies, you know, the, that had to play pops gigs, they always get a little wary, like, what are we doing, and who are these guys, <laughs> you know. And so, and Ray would always come in, and Ray was always cold, and he always wore his brown trench coat all the time. So he came in, and he's got the thing, and he's got the tub of the, of the uh, barley, and he's sitting there with his barley, and he's like, like waiting, right? He's waiting for everything, and he's just sitting there. And the two knuckleheads behind him, the violin players, are going like, who's Inspector Gadget at the piano? <laughs> and I remember, and I was like, slowly I turn. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, we're gonna, I, I, it's like I go over to Ray and I just wind him up. <laughs> You're ready to roll, Ray. So uh, the, the, we'd always play I Got Rhythm as the first number because Ray got to play first. And I'd say, okay, here we go. And we go, I got rhythm. <laughs> And he played three of the most, and by the end, and at the end, they were, the violin players were sitting there going, I guess we, sp oh, you're, you're really great. <laughs> Ray would just turn around and go, yeah. <laughs> same, same orchestra. Uh, Martin, uh, Martin couldn't make the gig, and Tommy subbed. And so not only is Ray ruining the violin section, that night, and they gave, you know, and they would always give the worst bass goes to the bass player, uh, especially the jazz gig, go, here's your bass, and they throw it at you, you know. So Tommy's up there playing, and I said, uh, Tommy, you play a solo on this one. So Tommy Kennedy goes, sure, and it's, he starts to go, and Ray's going, <laughs> and that's in the afternoon. At night, when I got to the theater to play the concert, Tommy Kennedy was in his dressing room with the five bass players of the symphony giving a lesson to them. That's where I'm supposed to drop the mic, right? Can't do it, just so we only have one mic. But anyway, uh, I say that because uh, these two gentlemen, uh, Tommy Kennedy and uh, Ray Kennedy, are, are, uh, are your gifts to jazz world, right out of your, your city, and uh, we're grateful to have uh, heard Ray, to have played with him, and to still, to hear Tommy Kennedy play the bass is, is one of the most amazing things in the world, so we thank you for that. One, two, three. It is only a paper moon hanging over a cardboard sea, but wouldn't be make-believe if you believed in me. It is only a canvas sky hanging over a muslin tree. It wouldn't be make believe if you believed in me. Well, without your love, it's a honky tonk parade. Without 
It's a melody played on a penny arcade It's a Barnum and Bailey world I just phony as it can be But I would have been make-believe If you believed for me I got it Without your love, it's a honky tonk parade. Without your love, it's a melody playing on a penny arcade. It's part of a belly world, just phony as it can be. But wouldn't be make believe if you would be.
That's a little piece called T for Tatum that uh, Ray and I came up with from the uh, uh, Birdland CD. The evening breeze caress the trees tenderly. The trembling trees embrace the breeze tenderly. The shore was kissed by sea and mist tenderly. I can't forget how two hearts met breathlessly. Your arms open wide and close me inside. You took my All right, we have, uh, is the ringer here? Are you ready? You ready, you ready for your moment? We've, we've heard that uh, this person plays the piano. Why don't you come up here? This is Brielle Kennedy, ladies and gentlemen. Her sister Lauren is right there in the front row. Good, got the wave, got the wave. And Eve Langner, Eve, Eve Kennedy right there, also in the front row. Now, uh, you got a little piece you're gonna play for us? It's called Some Other Blues, right? Written by Ray Kennedy. Brielle Kennedy, ladies and gentlemen, at the floor.
fantastic. Absolutely great. So, here's the plan of action. We're going to play uh, Oscar night, raise a piece for you, and then we're going to take a short pause. Uh, when you come back, we're going to bring out the Pope. <laughs> He's still eating your tiramisu, so it could be a little while yet. Oh, no, you, don't, you don't get that. You don't get that anywhere else. That's un unbelievable. So uh, here's Ray's composition, Oscar Night. I can't, I can't tell you how happy I am right now. Thank you so much, everybody. Go ahead.
Peshkutsky. Martin Pizzarelli. My name's John Pizzarelli. We'll be right back. The chemistry with Ray was so uh, uh, magical because he, he also understood the showbiz thing that we were doing. You know, the idea of entertaining people. It wasn't just like, hey, we're a jazz group and everybody calm down. You know, there were certain things like the Nat Cole Trio would do that we wanted to do and Ray would, you know, trading little things back and forth and all that stuff that we used to do was... Uh, you know, we were so off the cuff, people thought we were actually had everything planned, which was always what you wanted. It was stunning. But the, the piano playing that uh, was inside of this guy, truly a uh, genius at work. They should have just put the sign on the piano. Everybody's here, I love that. So, uh, uh, one, uh, two, two points of major interest. Uh, first of all, uh, Ray's sister Wanda is right here. Uh, Wanda Kennedy. And uh, Tommy Kennedy is in Poland this evening. That's what musicians do. Uh, and uh, sends his regards and his regrets, but he's uh, thrilled that we're, you know, he's very happy for us. Anyway, he's, he's some, there somewhere, uh, there are Polish musicians who are having their lives changed because Tommy Kennedy is playing for them. <laughs> now, uh, just a couple of things I'd like to read to you from, from just people who uh, admired Ray, it's amazing. Uh, I, there's a kid online named Yuki Harai. You know, have you seen Yuki? He's uh, this guy we used to go see all the time at, uh, oh, he would see us uh, at, at the Blue Note in Tokyo. And uh, his message to me today was, make sure you continue to play Oscar Knight and T for Tatum. I don't want anyone to forget about Ray. Uh, these are the kinds of people who, who, who followed Ray around. Now, there's also these, uh, um, Various and sundry, and I'd like to thank Charlie Brennan because uh, <laughs> very uh, was very generous in 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 uh, plugging this event this evening. And uh, you, you you know if you don't have a friend like that, uh, I'm talking to Eve basically, saying what do you want to hear. And thank you, Charlie. You're you're a dear man, and and you really you really you did a hell of a job. And you know, you know how much I love you. Now, now I got a record coming out in September. <laughs> really dig the show. Okay. So anyway, these are these are four really interesting. Well, just guys who used to come here as play. Uh, this first one is a man is a man named uh, Doug McIntyre. Uh, Doug's on the radio in Los Angeles, and he's from Long Island. He used to come hear the band, and, and he wanted to say write something, and he wrote a really nice thing about Ray. So this is from Doug McIntyre. I'm not a musician. I'm a radio gas bag who can't play, sing, whistle, or hum a note of anything. Maybe that's why I've always been awestruck by musicians. Musicians speak a higher language, a language that transcends space and time. Ray Kennedy wasn't just fluent in music. He was a virtuoso, inspired and inspiring. I only met Ray a dozen times at most. Our conversations were brief, usually along the lines of, remember the time you played brilliantly and I sat and listened? I never knew what to say to Ray. I just liked being in the room with him. I consider it a point of pride that he knew my name. The last time I spoke with Ray was in California when the trio was touring the George Shearing CD. Ray entered the, ho the hotel lobby with two big bags full of fruit, specifically cantaloupes and watermelons. I don't remember a syllable of what we said, but I remember thinking, Ray Kennedy sure likes melons. This isn't the greatest insight, but for some reason, I cherish that memory. <laughs> but as we all know, in addition to his brilliance on the piano, there was nothing, there was something extra special about Ray Kennedy that distinguished him from your run-of-the-mill genius. He had that ethereal Harpo Marx-like sweet, mischievous smile perpetually plastered to his face. Ray seemed stuck on happy. I, I probably played Ray's T for Tatum a thousand times on my radio show. I'll always play Ray Kennedy's music. 
It's joyful and loving and intelligent. He was a real artist who, in his all too brief life, made the world a better place. It was an honor to have known him even tangentially. Ray Kennedy is irreplaceable. That's from Doug Mackinson. This next one starts out the exact same way. It's from Bob Ryan of the Boston Globe, who's also on ESPN, and, and a huge fan, Ray Kennedy fan, as you'll hear. I'm not a musician, merely a devoted fan of jazz. Upon being introduced to the then John Pizzarelli trio many years ago by my friend Jonathan Schwartz, I became infatuated with John's piano player and a bullient fellow named Ray Kennedy. I had a personal holy trio of the 88s that consisted of Count Basie, Errol Garner, and Dave McKenna, but Ray quickly became another favorite. Has anyone ever looked happier playing the piano? He romped up and down the keyboard. I always looked forward to his solos. My wife Elaine has a lasting memory of sitting alongside Ray one evening and him smiling away for the entire performance. We have lost a joyful presence at the keyboard. Bob Ryan from the Boston Board. I'm sure you all know Mitch Album, who wrote uh, Tuesdays with Maury and uh, a number of fine books. He's also on the radio in Detroit, uh, and you'll hear what Mitch had to say. Everyone who wants to be a jazz piano player secretly envies some other jazz piano player. For me, the perfect player was Ray Kennedy. I would watch him with the Pizzarellis, and he just seemed so effortless, so relaxed, so in touch with the music and the amazing licks he produced. After several years of quiet envy, I asked him if he ever gave lessons. I expected him to say, ha, why would I teach you my secrets? <laughs> but instead, he said, sure. And a few weeks later, I found myself in his apartment, sitting by his side. My jazz dream, I admitted, was to learn to play Red Garland's Billy Boy. To me, it was the Holy Grail. And Ray nodded his head and said, no problem, and proceeded to transcribe the whole thing while I watched. Then he showed me the secret to playing it. This was like watching someone fly to the moon while you stood on the ground. <laughs> but that's how I felt around Ray, that he just heard things others didn't and navigated a universe I could only dream about. Such privilege often makes a man haughty or egotistical. Ray was none of that. He was as gentle as he was gifted. At the end of our lesson, he shyly asked if I would listen to a recording he'd made with a Japanese group playing Mozart in a jazz mode. Only Ray Kennedy could be shy about reinventing Mozart. <laughs> it was brilliant, as was he. I left that day realizing that I'd wasted a lot of energy envying Ray when I should have just been appreciating him. Mitch Album. I think we all sort of felt that way. Uh, we're going to read one more thing. Uh, this is from Billy Crystal. And uh, uh, we have a, a, a little bit of a, uh, if you're on the end, just move in a little bit that way, because I was watching it today, so you can see it. And I, this is me making that noise, right? OK, so I just, there's one more noise to be made, and it's now gone away. <laughs> That's the noise of my house. So anyway, just so you know, so I'll read this from Billy Crystal. Then we're going to show this really great uh, bit of business that Maddie Dames uh, edited together. And it shows some remarkable musical moments uh, of Ray with us in the, in the group. And then also there are clips of Billy Crystal doing bits about Ray. Uh, we, we got to play... We got to be in, uh, participate in the making of the soundtrack of a movie called Forget Paris. And basically, that was the review. <laughs> but the music was good. I'm sure Billy Crystal's so happy I said that. But um, we, we spent this entire day in a music studio. And uh, you'll see a clip of Billy... Uh, nicknaming Ray, and then he, does, he just does like he would say, I had a video camera, and he'd say, follow me. And then we'd go into another room, and Billy Crystal would be like, he would pretend he was the, uh, the cleanup guy at the studio and talking about musicians. And then there's another, so there's all these little things, and then you'll just see 
uh, also the greatness of Ray Kennedy playing the piano and amazing, uh, amazing crowds around the world. So this is from Billy Crystal. He was a jazz man. With a grace and a sweet smile, he'd settle in behind the black and whites and fly off into the complex and stunning world that only he could hear. I loved working with Ray. I enjoyed being around him as he was something very rare, an honest man, a truthful soul with a quiet wit and a musician's urgency to count it off and simply and joyfully get everything there was to get out of the melody. I watched the joy in his eyes, the grace of his hands, as they made his beautiful thoughts come to life. I gave him a nickname, Captain Gentle. It made him smile, and he hugged me when I told him. That will be how I remember Ray. I can see in my mind the first session in heaven, Ellington at the podium asking Bill Evans to take a five and motion for Ray. He sits, he smiles, he counts it off, he plays. Ellington nods. Play on, Captain Gentle. That's from Billy Crystal. Hello, Al. You never guess what's happened. I found him. This kid can play like nobody else's business. Yeah, I'm watching him now in the studio. He's a big, lanky kid. He's nothing but yeast and spinach and wheat and grains. No, he's not Mr. Ed, you. Why, I... No, his name is... Captain Gentle. I'm telling you, it's gonna be the newest thing. Yeah, listen to him. What do you think? Now, he's going to Europe tonight, but maybe, just maybe, we can get him back when he comes back. He's gonna be back in May. Yeah. He plays with his two brothers, but they're nothing. This is the kid, I'm telling you. We found him. Gershon will turn over in his goddamn grave when he sees this kid. Uh, never mind, I'll get back to you. I can't forget the time or place when we just met She's just the girl for me And I want all the world to see we met mm -hmm. Falling, yes I'm falling She keeps calling me back again Oh, falling, yes I'm falling oh. Falling, yes I'm falling She keeps calling me Sitting uh, in America. <laughs> and uh, help me with our last name, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Captain General. Live in person. In person. Martin. And moi. His latest album is called Live at Birdland. Please welcome back to the show, John Pizzarelli Trio. Just you, 
just me Let's find a cozy spot to cuddle and coo Just us, just we I've missed an awful lot, my trouble is you Oh gee, what are your charms for? What are my arms for? Use your imagination, just you Just me, I'll tie lovers not round Wonderful you Like it was finished at the Apollo Theater, and he goes backstage, uh, back in the backyard to get his car. And he goes back there, a guy sticks a gun on his rib and says, Give me all your money. He says, Yes, yes. Gave the watch all the money, and the, the robber says, Thank you very much. By the way, I have all your records. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and unfortunately, it's true. <laughs> Uh, this is a uh, song that Ray wrote as a tribute to uh, actually not just Oscar Peterson, but the Oscar Peterson trio. Actually, we, I start, my roots are basically uh, uh, because of my dad, guitarist Les Paul. No, actually because my dad is uh, <laughs> guitarist uh, Bucky Pizzarelli. I start with, uh, thank you. I start with the Nat Cole trio because basically I was tied to a chair and played the records for hours on end. And uh, it was the most enjoyable time of my life. And when Ray uh, joined the trio, we, uh, he said, well, it's it sort of, as you see it, the natural progression was what the trio became was the Oscar Peterson trio with Herb Ellis and uh, Ray Brown in the group. And Ray wrote this piece as a tribute to them. It's called Just a Scosche because Oscar is from Nova Scotia and his friends call him Big Scotia. There's even a song called Blues for Big Scotia, so we're not lying about this stuff. And uh, this is a song from our new standards album written by Ray and it's called Just a Skosh.
Ray Kennedy. So this kid's pretty good. I put out the coffee here, I'm here every day. I listen to all of these big shot rock and roll son of a bitches play. Some lanky guy who eats steamed spinach and leeks comes in, plays them right on their ass. This guy pumps up in the gym, I understand. He's got muscles, but I don't even have muscles yet. On his ass. <laughs> it's been a session, a wacky session, <laughs> with the brothers and the Captain General. <laughs> go now. You go to Europe, I go home. Fly safe. Billy Crystal, ladies and gentlemen. Another guy, oh, Bucky Pizzarelli will be, uh, as we like to say, the Pope will be in the house tonight. We just woke him up, Bucky Pizzarelli, ladies and gentlemen.
maestro has decided to play a Richard Rogers melody from uh, South Pacific. Oh, they're going to play. Oh, you're going to play both of it. It's actually just two songs. <laughs> uh, imagine this guy in the huddle. I, I know I, I was going to throw a pass, but I feel like I would, uh, we'll just run. We'll run the ball. So here is uh, It's Easy to Remember, and This Nearly Was Mine.
that was uh, that was if I had you, and now Hoagie Carmichael Stardust. <laughs> Bucky Pizzarelli, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, he wants me to tell this story. Yeah, oh, you know, normally uh, you would have, do you have any records for sale tonight? I got some 78s in the car. Right now. <laughs> you gotta love a guy who comes with material. <laughs> so here's the deal. Now, I come home from the University of Tampa. We have a lovely parting of the ways after three very successful semesters.
Yeah, you don't do that. You'll actually go to school. <laughs> Uh, I was laughed out of the University of Tampa. Uh, and I, and I, he says, come home, we'll play some gigs, we'll have some fun. Okay, so I come home, and, he, and now at the time, during uh, from like September to June, he has a trio at the Café Pierre, and that group plays uh, uh, five nights a week. They're tearing it up, everything's going great. After like three years, the booking guy calls up my father and says, you know, the, they love the music at the pier. They'd like to have maybe just a duo for the summer, keep the music going. What do you suggest? I'm calling you for advice. My father says, I'll do it with my kid. <laughs> so he was effectively his own summer replacement. <laughs> this is called business savvy. So uh, I go in now, uh, I'm um, 21, and uh, I think I was, I might have been 20, which is even worse. And uh, uh, I know four songs, three of which are Honeysuckle Rose. <laughs> and we have to play from seven to 11. And all he did was play melodies and growl at me. Don't you know this? And that was, that was the ear training course that I took for that summer. It's Bucky Pizzarelli. You should just go to Berklee School of Music and do that to people. Just play melodies and growl at them. You can't imagine how fast you learn songs. So we're into week six. I now know about 93 songs. Uh, and uh, it's, it's this hot outside in New York City. Everything is still. We've come in in the Datsun 210, my car. No air conditioning. Windows up. You don't mess my hair. I lost 20 pounds on the car ride. Tuxedos. So now we, we uh, it's it's about 10:30. We're gonna finish at 11. We're playing out the string basically, and and uh, uh, there's really nobody in the joint. So we're just going along now. 10:45. Party of 12. Walks in, sits down right there, and while we're playing, I'm, you know, I'm just looking at the watch. You know, at that point, and Bucky says to me, Van Clyburn. Okay, so he calls over the Mater D, and of course the Mater D thrilled that 12 people have come in with 15 minutes left in the evening. And my father says to him, uh, <laughs> Van Clyburn. And the guy says, no, 11 o'clock, out. <laughs> okay, we finish the thing, and we walk out. 11 o'clock comes, party of 12. Appetizers going down. Out the door, into the tea room. A man from the Clyburn party follows us and says, uh, excuse me, gentlemen, uh, we have a party here with Van Clyburn. Now, it was weird that he should speak like this. They're all from Texas. So uh, the guy says, and we, you know, we would love for you uh, both uh, to play a little more for Van. He would love to hear some music, if you would. And my father gives him the answer he's always given me for years. <laughs> now, the guy understands this and says, and does it this way. He goes, well, I'd like to give you each a hundred dollar bill. Well, as before he could say bill, we had grabbed the money. We ran back inside. Now we play for 45 minutes. He plays the Rodrigo guitar concerto. We play the score of Oklahoma, Cats. And Cats isn't even on Broadway yet. Steaming Mater D over here, very happy 12 people over here. We finish up, triumphantly we stand, Bucky walks over to the table, Van Clyburn stands up and, he, and the first words, oh, well, lovely, he says, how do you two know each other?
And my father says, that's my kid. He's my son. And, and, she, and, and Van then turns to a woman who's sitting next to him and says, mother, they're father and son. And she, and she goes, oh, father and son. Oh, my goodness. And she runs over to my father and she shakes his hand. He's oh, father and son. Everybody's applauding. And 12 people were exchanging emails. There's no computers yet. Everybody's happy, oh, and so beautiful, and we now triumphantly leave the room, and we go to the elevator. We're going to go up, drop our stuff, and go back to the car. Now, as we get into the elevator, this one over here, oh, 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 oh unbelievable. Oh, 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 oh. We get up in the room, we put the guitars, and they go, oh, 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 it was great, oh, it was great. We come all the way down, we go out to Fifth Avenue. You could still park on Fifth Avenue then, and he's, oh. <laughs> we get in the car. I'm just about to start. The guy says, hey, whoa, 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 before we go any further, what's so funny? He goes, the mother gave me another hundred. <laughs> that is a bulletproof story. And I learned the Bucky Pizzarelli School of Division that night. <laughs> Did you know that half of 300 is 100? <laughs> I'd, uh, I would like to thank you all for coming out tonight to celebrate the life of one of the greatest musicians who's walked this planet, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, it's been a thrill to have you all here. On behalf of the band, uh, Martin and Conrad, and this guy, who's just uh, amazing, 89 years old, tearing it up. We're going to play one more number. Okay. <laughs> Not for that yet. You know, this is a, I haven't worked with him in, in about, since we were here, since we were here at uh, the Bistro. So it's a big deal for me to be with you on this bandstand too, so. So, uh, uh, be proud that you, uh, you got to hear Ray Kennedy. And, uh, and I think, uh, uh, girls, we're so glad you're here. Wanda, everybody who came this evening. Uh, it was a good celebration for a really one of the one of the one of the gentle giants of, of jazz And you'll always st. Louis can always say yeah, well, I'm from st. Louis That's where Ray Kennedy's from one of the great jazz piano players of all time So Thanks everybody and uh, uh, You know uh, the 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 anthem that we all got to play together was honeysuckle rose take it away champ
Thank you to the Sheldon for having us. Bucky Pizzarelli, ladies and gentlemen. Music is good.